Okay, in this video I wanted to talk about the switch statement, which is the second of the uh, two branching statements. Now, if you haven't watched my video on if statements, um, you should be maybe looking at that first to see how these compare. Um, but basically, with the way the switch works is that it looks at a certain variable, and then it activates a a set of commands based on the value of that variable. Now it's important to remember that the value of that variable has to be discrete. Okay, so unlike the if statement where you can say um, if a value is less than 10 or if it's greater than 100 or something like that, uh, you can't do that with a switch. Okay, so switches only work if the value is say is like 6 or 7 or 8, so it has to be a specific value. Okay, so let's take a look at that and I'll demonstrate this um, with an example here. So let's say I have some int number. I'm just going to move this up here a bit. Okay, so int number. And I'll set the number to be 10 to start. Okay, the way a switch works then is to just say switch. And then inside a set of parentheses, I have to say what variable I want to look at. So in this case, I'm looking at the number variable. Now it's important to remember that you cannot have um, a constant in here. Okay, so it wouldn't make sense to say like switch 10, right, uh, or switch 7, okay, because the 7 can't change, okay, so it's always 7. Okay. So I'm going to switch number, okay, and then I'm going to open up the body of the switch. And inside the switches, uh, inside the switch, what I do is I select certain cases. So in this case, I'm going to say, well, I have case 10. Now, the parentheses are not required, but I like them, so I think it looks neater. Uh, so I put them in. Okay, And basically, this is like an if statement in a way. So what happens here is it says switch, and the switch is looking at the number. And then what happens is, say, case, if the number is 10, then to do this. All right, so I'm just going to say, see out the number is 10. Okay, just something simple. Okay, once again, this backslash n is an n line character. Okay, and we'll see how this works. Okay, so we have the number is, there you go, I just forgot to compile this here. Okay, so it says the number is 10. Okay, and it kind of makes sense, right? If the number looks at the number, if the number is 10, then to do this. Okay, now, let's say, for instance, that we give another case. So we, have, we say the number is 8. Okay, or 80, it wouldn't have mattered. Okay, and I put another one here. I say C out. The number is 8. Okay, and I change the number to be 8. Okay, and once again, I forgot to compile it again. Okay, so it says the number is 8. Alright, so you can see very clearly what happens if. Uh, if a value matches up, okay, but there's a little, f a few things that are interesting about the switch, okay. Now the first one is, uh, as I said, that you can only have discrete values, okay. So uh, it's I can't put, uh, say, like less than nine or something like that. So it has to be either ten or eight or something like that. So it has to be a specific value, okay. Okay, you cannot say greater than, less than, not equal to, or something like that. Okay. The second thing is, um, well, I'll demonstrate this with another example here, is this. So let's take a look. When I set the number to be 10, now it says the number is 10 and the number is also 8. Okay, which is kind of interesting because what happens here is, well, it's supposed to say the number is 10 because the number is actually 10. Okay, but it also says that the number is 8. And a lot of people will make this mistake here. And the reason why this happens is because the switch is kind of like a light switch. Okay, once it gets turned on, it's on, right? And it can't be turned off. Okay, so what happens here is that when we get to case 10, it says, oh, okay, this is, this is matching. It turns the switch on, okay, which means that this executes. Now, when it gets to case 8, even though this isn't true, 
uh, it doesn't turn off the switch because the switch was already turned on by case 10. Okay, so then the body of this case gets executed as well, right? And this is actually a pretty useful feature for some very specific cases or instances. Okay, so for instance, uh, um, if you were doing a set of instructions and you were, you wrote the instructions um, in order, and let's say you, your program was executing some of them. Like, let's say the instructions are for assembling a piece of furniture or something like that. Um, if you were to start off, and let's say you went from step one to seven and then left, okay, and later on, you know, you're trying to make a program or something to tell you how to how to do this, you'd start off on the on seven. Okay, you could write these in order in the case. It would go down to the case seven and then continue on from there. All right. Now, typically, though, people that do this also use a command called break. Okay, and what break does is it breaks out of the current construct that you, you are in. Okay, so if you go to case 10 now with a break, it'll say the number is 10, and then it'll break out of the switch, okay, which will just end the switch right away. Okay, so it says the number is 10. Okay, um, and then it no longer says the number is 8, which means that we've broken another switch and we have basically another decision making structure here. Now there's one last thing about the uh, switch and that is that um, there is a default setting. Okay, so default. Okay, and the default basically means if it's not any of these ones then to do this one. So it's kind of like the akin to the else statement uh, with the if uh, statement. Okay, so uh, default, I'll say see out the number is neither uh, 10 nor 8. Okay, recompile. It's going to say the number is 10 in this case, okay, which it does. But if I set this to be, say, 6. Okay, it says the number is neither 10 nor 8. Okay, and the reason why it does that is it says the number is, it, goes, it comes down, so number 6, checks if it's 10, no, checks if it's 8, no, and then says not, not any of those, okay, go to the default one. Okay, and that's essentially how a switch works. Okay, like I said though, it's important to remember that most people for decision making don't use switches. Uh, most people will use a series of if statements because they're easier and they're also better in a way because you can um, use a switch statement or you can use an if statement with non-discrete values. So I can say if a value is less than 10 or greater than 50 or uh, not equal to 7 or something like that. Right? Whereas with a switch, you can only work with discrete values. Now sometimes that's useful. As I said, um, there are some specific cases or, or types of problems where switches are really handy but they are more the exception than the norm. Okay, so uh, always keep the switch in mind. Um, typically a lot of people might use this for a menu system as well. So they set up a numeric menu or something like that and they'll assign each menu item under a switch. It looks, it looks kind of neat in the program. Uh, you can do it with if statements, but you could also do it with a switch as well. Anyways, uh, once, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Throw a comment in the comment bar or send me an email. I'll try and help you if I can. Uh, if you do like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you do like the channel, then please consider subscribing.